Hey guys, just wanted to uh, make a quick video talking about the 5.4 uh, class changes that are currently on the front page of MMO Champion. Now, as usual, with early data mined patch notes such as these, do take it with a grain of salt, but I'm really excited for some of these changes that are coming through, uh, specifically for the Druid class. So uh, let's go ahead and just uh, dive right into uh, what you see on your screen now. Now, Monk, we're not really going to be talking a lot in this video because what you see on your screen right now for Monk is all we really have at the moment. Basically, Cheat Torpedo update saying that it does indeed travel further than Roll, which we already knew. Um, and then a major glyph, uh, Glyph of Afterlife, which increases the chance to summon a healing sphere when you kill an enemy while gaining experience or honor by 100%, which is kind of like, you know, whatever. Anyways, Druid changes. There's a lot of Druid changes, and just based off of where the changes sit right now, it's really looking like Druid is going to be in a very, very good spot going into next patch. So Innervate, uh, instead of it being 10% of the caster's maximum mana over 10 seconds, it's now going to be mana equal to 50% of the caster's spirit. So my understanding, as long as you're right about the 12,000 spirit range, then this doesn't actually change anything for you. Um, it should be roughly right about the same. Um, we're going to skip over some of the things that aren't necessarily specific to restoration as well in this. So Wild Mushroom Bloom, it causes your Wild Mushroom to bloom, uh, obviously. So it uh, heals all allies within 10 yards for 13400 plus 124.2% of spell power. I think that's just a tooltip update. I don't think it's necessarily a buff. Uh, oh, actually, um, this kind of ties into what... Uh, is later on in the patch notes basically later in the patch notes on a different slide here uh, wild mushroom bloom it's just going to be one mushroom instead of three so that actually makes sense they're just consolidating the information into one so yeah that makes sense there uh, Ysera's gift is a new spell so every five seconds it heals you for five percent of your maximum health if you are at full health uh, the most injured nearby ally will be healed instead can be cast in uh can't be cast sorry in moonkin form uh, this is going to replace Nature's Swiftness. Nature's Swiftness, uh, in the talent tree at least, Nature's Swiftness uh, is now baseline for Resto Druid, and you learn it at uh, some lower level. So let's move into some of the talents. This this is where things get a little bit exciting for us. Um, so they've, they've kind of reworked Dream of Scenarius a little bit. Um, basically... Da, 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 da. Um, restoration, it increases your Wrath damage by 20%, and your Wrath spells cause a nearby ally to be healed for 100% of the damage done. So it's basically like a cooldown version of Atonement. Kind of. So Heart of the Wild is pretty awesome. Uh, so it's still the base intellect by 6% at all times, uh, but now while activated, it also increases all healing done, and it does all the other effects that Heart of the Wild has ever done. Um... I'm going to skip over Nature's Vigil. Soul of the Forest, uh, for Resto, instead of it being 75% um, haste, it's now 100% haste, which is pretty awesome. So, Ysera's Gift is still listed there, but this one specifies that it, uh, it is indeed a level 30 talent. So onward to more specific restoration changes. Uh, this is where things get really exciting for me. So Genesis is a brand new spanking spell for us. Uh, targets all party or raid members within 60 yards and accelerates the caster's rejuve effects, causing them to heal and expire at 400% of the normal rate. Uh, then I assume the rest of it like can't be cast in spirit of redemption or shadow form. That's just a bug. Uh, this sounds awesome. Like, I am super excited for this. This is going to give us some pretty intense um, burst healing capabilities, and it also gives us a pretty interesting way to kind of uh, charge up a mushroom, like, really, really quickly, which uh, I'm, I'm pretty excited about that. Um, a, a really good burst that makes everything, you know, it's 400% faster, heals for 400% more. So it's, it's just a faster rejuve, essentially. Um, so you just got a lot more burst capability there, which is going to be basically badass. So Wild Mushroom uh, has changed for us. Um, basically, it's the same as it was before, except instead of dropping three, you're now only dropping one. Um, so it's they're basically just consolidating, you know, the the three mushrooms into the one mushroom, and it still heals for roughly the same amount. I don't think they're buffing or nerfing that. 
Now, one of the things that's really interesting about this mushroom change is they're also increasing mobility with mushroom. So let's say you drop mushroom in the wrong, you know, in front of the wrong head on Megara. And, you know, you, oh, well, instead of stacking in front of poison, you're really stacking in front of arcane. Well, now you can just go ahead and redrop your mushroom and it moves with the previous healing amount that it had um, when it was at its last spot. So it gives us a lot of awesome mobility. So it's basically we can put it wherever we want to. If it's not in the right spot, we can redrop it. We can blow it up and you're not going to lose any of the bonus healing um, that you had pumped into it with your... Uh, your rejuve overhealing, which is is really awesome because that just improves our mobility even further, um, and that's that's going to be really really nice and handy. Uh, the only downside is in spread situations where you used to kind of drop one mushroom in one spot, one mushroom in another spot, and another one in another spot. Well, you now only have the one, but I I, I think that's an okay trade off because that's kind of a, a pretty limited um, a limited deal. The wild mushroom bloom uh, change, basically, like I said earlier, they're just consolidating it all into one instead of the three, uh, so no change there. So Glyph of Innervate has been changed slightly. Um, so instead of when Innervate is cast on a friendly target other than the caster, the caster will gain 10% of maximum mana. Um, it's now target other than the caster. Both the caster and the target will benefit, but at a 40% reduced effect. Um, that's what the old glyph was, I think. So they're kind of reverting the innervate changes that they had made prior. Um, and glyph of the master shapeshifter, it's just reduces it by 100% instead of 90%. Not that big of a deal there. So overall, just based off of the talent changes and the uh, the restoration specific changes, it's looking very very good here. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and talk about set bonuses, both for Monk and for Druid. Um, not so sure how I feel about either set, uh, but we'll just go ahead and start with the Monk one, which is the bottom one. Uh, so your two set is when Gift of the Serpent Spheres heal a player, they gain an Absorb for 20% of the amount healed. This seems a little funny to me, because they're basically going, yeah, we think, we think Absorbs are overpowered, so let's just go ahead and make Hots have an Absorb. Okay, I mean, if that's what you want to do... Seems a little underwhelming compared to uh, our existing set bonuses, though. So, four set, when you're renewing Mist Heals a target, you have a 20% chance to cast a Chi Wave Healing Bolt. This last bit I'm kind of confused by. That will not bounce at a nearby low health friendly target. I assume that's that's a, just a wording bug from data mining. Um, so, you're renewing Mist Heals and you've got a 20% chance for free bonus healing. That's going to be interesting. We'll have to see how that plays out, though. Now, Druid, this is kind of a weird thing for me. Ironbark kind of went from, let's give Druids a tank cooldown into, Ironbark is a 60 second cooldown into, let's just mash Ironbark on cooldown for a healing increase. Not so sure how I feel about that, but, you know, more healing is fine with me. It's another buff, whatever. So Ironbark increases your critical chance by 20% for 12 seconds. Um, okay, why not? Four set. This is an interesting one. Rejuve, Life Bloom, and Wild Growth critical heals have a chance to cause all cast time heals for the next 12 seconds to cause a living seed on the target for 80% of the amount healed. So they're basically going, you get a crit, you get a buff, and you're basically using like a single target um, spirit shell, almost, is, is kind of what that's wording out to be. We'll have to see how that really plays out. I'm really not sure how I feel about that. Um... Don't really know what the practical use of that is going to be, but we'll have to uh, we'll have to kind of wait and see. So, druid changes are awesome. Based off of the druid changes where they sit, uh, I honestly feel like druids are going to be in a much much better spot than uh, mistweaver monks are, unless they do some pretty radical changes to mistweaver monks. Um, I I I don't know. I just. Uh, there's a really good chance right now that I might actually end up main swapping to my druid. Uh, and I know I haven't been playing my Druid much this this expansion because they've been really kind of crappy up until 5.3. But Druids look like they're just going to dominate in 5.4 with all of these changes. I'm like super duper excited about this. Specifically the Genesis thing and the Wild Mushroom change. The, those are all very, very awesome changes that are going to be excessively overpowered. Which I'm I'm really, really looking forward to. 
Uh, I mentioned this on my stream the other night. Um, the, the difference between Resto and Monk, if they're both on equal playing field, like let's say in 5.4 they both heal for the same amount, their utility is similar, like there's no real significant advantage or disadvantage between the two on paper, I will end up being on my Druid in this specific case. Because Monk playstyle is a little more whack-a-mole, you don't really have control over where all of your Renewing Mists go. You have a little bit of control, but not really. And with Resto Druid, you just you, you have control over where everything is going, which is a huge, huge thing when it comes to progression. Um, not to mention our mobility tank healing with uh, with Life Bloom specifically, which um, this was something we had spoken to at length about for uh, like Lei Shen uh, Heroic Final Phase. If my Druid was geared, I probably would have taken it on that. Um, just because of how druids kind of play in the in the final phase there, even pre five point three. Uh, the other interesting tidbit to throw in here, uh, just based off of the MMO champion data mind information, uh, there are some uh, raid and dungeon abilities at the very very bottom uh, that really get me kind of excited. It's kind of reminding me of Ice Crown Citadel as far as hots are concerned, um, because there's there's quite a few spells in here that are basically static AoE raid damage, which is really awesome because that means druids, monks, holy priests to an extent, lol holy should just be disc, uh, are going to be very, very strong. So a couple examples, Calamity. Uh, it says it calls forth a great Calamity, striking all players for 0% of their maximum health as shadow damage. Obviously a tooltip data mind issue. We'll see where that actual percentage value lies, but that's going to be fun. Um, this also removes Shadow Word Bane from all targets. Don't really know what that's referring to yet, but that spell is basically screaming passive AoE damage all the time during that fight, or at least for part of the fight. Um, there's another one. It's called Dark Meditation. It says um, Sun Tenderheart uh, enters a Dark Meditation, so it sounds like it's a phase, inflicting shadow damage to all enemies every second. Players take 35% less damage when inside her meditative field. Players at a distance greater than 40 yards take increased damage. So basically, again, another static AoE spell, which is awesome. Uh, then there's another one called Displaced Energy, which inflicts 250,000 shadow damage every 3 seconds for 9 seconds. Um, when Displaced Energy expires, the energy explodes outward, inflicting 450,000 shadow damage to all allies within 8 yards, limited to 2 targets. So that's, that's going to be interesting. You're going to have a couple of those out. That kind of sounds like the... Um, Oh god, what are they called? The Grand Empress, like, dissonance fields, that's what they are. Um, we'll see how that plays out, but again, more kind of passive AoE damage for at least a portion of the fight. Um, which sounds really awesome. Uh, toxic Mist deals 120,000 nature damage every 3 seconds for 30 seconds and causes growing tox... tox... Uh, I can't talk today, toxicity... Uh, yeah, whatever... Uh, to the target. Uh, limited to 2 targets, so again, same thing. And then there's a Venom Cloud which a poison cloud inflicts nature damage to enemies every two seconds and reduces healing effects by 90% for 14. So it's kind of like the general theme here, and Ghostcrawler was kind of talking about how they want to make HOTS a little bit more efficient or effective or, you know, just kind of make that class more viable. Well, that sounds like what they're doing. Things like um, the, the passive AoE damage and then the, the resto druid buffs, but it just screams Ice Crown Citadel for druids all over again. Um, things like, you know, Blood Queen and... Um, future side and things like that so i'm super excited for this uh it's really looking like it's going to be the patch for resto druids um druids have kind of been lacking all expansion up until recently so i'm it's going to be interesting to see where resto druids sit but i'm very excited about the changes uh, and i'm definitely going to be gearing and working on my druid and doing a lot of theory crafting during ptr and making sure that i'm i'm all ready to go for a lot of the resto druid changes which i'm obviously super excited about so that's it for now as always with 5.4 changes things are subject to change uh anything you see in this video no guarantee that it will go live uh ghost crawler blah blah nerf nerf buff buff etc etc so everything in this video may be wrong or right who knows uh, we'll be making more PTR videos as PTR comes out and is available to us, uh, hopefully with some gameplay and a little bit more interaction talking about the changes. As always, if you have any questions, comments, etc., please feel free to comment uh, or contact me directly via Facebook, Twitter, or you can even uh, chat it up in our stream chat when I'm streaming, and I'll make sure to answer all your questions. But that is it for now. 
I'm out. I don't have a good exit line, so just deal with it, nerds.